Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukols at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. Uh, why don't he call before I get to the train? They want to just make me run through this screen. And this one. And this one here. Come on. No, this, this is. This just ruins it all for me. Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Oh. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. There are going to be three people here. Oh, there's more. Okay. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukon population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukon people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last Ice Age. Curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. This people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. <laughs> Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yukol forebearers managed to tame mammoths. 
prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yukol's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yukol people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukols learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yuko Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian ice art is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care. And the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, Siberia is an island. To resist the temptation Shit. you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yuko population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live, or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lectures should you so require them. I imagine I will.
Yeah. No point. It's locked. Uh, then why did you show those assholes going through there? Do they call her Kate Walker because she walks around a lot? Professor, it's me. I've come to pick up the mammoth doll. You bastard. The doll is waiting for you there, Miss Walker. Please take good care of it. Don't worry. I'm beginning to get quite attached to it myself. Can I trouble you just a little longer? No, you don't need With to trouble With pleasure, him. Kate. I'm all ears. I'll leave- Sorry? Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. I'm in Barakstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? <laughs> 
Nope. From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? Can you fuck I don't up, think man? so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Oh, don't fuck be you. so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? Nope. But my yourself. mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Go fuck yourself. Your shoes. Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well. Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on the subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it now. Call me back when you've calmed down. I was no, perfectly calm you. before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? Yeah, he's an asshole. Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Hang up. Yeah. Fuck him. This isn't a free model. I don't need that for the time being. Yeah, yeah. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Speaking of mechanical problems, there aren't any other hitches I should know about, Oscar? Nope. This train has no mechanical problems, Kate Walker. Winding the spring mechanism is standard service procedure. Yeah. Okay, okay, Oscar. Don't get all touchy about it. I didn't mean it like that. Can we... Oscar, if you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay...